All right, guys, earlier than usual video here because we need to find out what the F just happened to crypto and Bitcoin and the overall market because the overall market is down almost 4%. I went to bed, lovely, slept like a baby, woke up and Bitcoin had lost around $1,000. So what on earth is going on? We are going to be discussing a number of different options that we have here because a few things happened that... Uh, pretty much played a part in this. So we're going to discuss all of that. I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section if there's anything I've missed out and you guys think is what hit this. But this is a video you're going to want to watch. So grab your morning coffee or your water with your electrolytes and let's jump straight into it. So overall market down 3.75% at the making of this video. Uh, yeah, 24 hours Bitcoin is down 4.3%, which is big, but nothing we're not used to here, right? If we look at the closer four hour chart here, we can see this absolutely monumental drop here. Boom, straight down. Someone was selling, someone was getting liquidated, someone was panicking. What was going on here? We're going to find out now. If we do zoom out a little bit and look at the daily or the weekly chart here, you can actually see that we still have this intact uptrend. So things might not be as bad as it looks right now, but we are going to be discussing that. Of course, if you did want to trade this, if you managed to get involved in this at a short, you would have made a nice position here. And we have bounced off this level of support we have down here. So Depending on what you think, you can trade this, of course, over at BitGet. This is where I do all of my personal leverage trading, and you can get up to a $10,000 deposit bonus just from following those links down there. So highly suggest signing up there if you are an experienced trader. Now, before we jump into what happened and what caused this, we have the DXY still on a red week today. But if we do move this over into the daily chart, we can see that we did have a green day just yesterday. Green days aren't good for our risk on asset. I walk a lonely road. Let's start to go through all of the different things that may have caused this dump. So first of all, we got the SEC chair Gary Gensler saying crypto exchanges may not be qualified custodians. Now, I don't think this is what happened. I don't think this is the reason why we collapsed because I think we could all agree that centralized exchanges aren't qualified custodians. I would much rather be able to use an exchange and still know exactly where my money was and see it plain as day rather than it being washed up in a centrally owned wallet, right? That would be better. So I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing. And I also do think that this further pushes the narrative of decentralized exchanges and decentralized perpetual exchanges. Of course, we've been looking at those here on the channel. So I think this is good for my personal holdings. You know, it might cause a little bit of panic, but I do think this is good overall. Now, moving Moving on from that, we do also have Bitcoin prices slide 5% in 60 minutes. And this article by Cointelegraph is claiming that the drop is due to the continuous fallout from Silvergate Bank, as there are now more uncertainty about the fear on and off ramps. In addition, there are now wider industry concerns that the US regulators are trying to cut off further banking relationships between crypto firms and FDIC insured banks. Now, that is definitely what seems to be happening, right? A lot of people are getting cut off from a lot of things. I'm getting continual messages messages from a load of different people saying they're no longer able to put money on or take money off. They're no longer able to stake that sort of stuff. And I think these things are going to continue to happen, guys. So figuring out ways you can get money in and out of crypto right now is vital in case your current method does get cut off. We also see HSBC and Nationwide impose new restrictions on cryptocurrency purchases in the UK. So this is going to continue to happen, right? The regulators are smashing their hammer down and they're not wanting you to get into crypto and potentially out of crypto. So figuring out a way that you can do that in your current circumstance, wherever you live, is something definitely to consider. But to look a little bit more closely at Silvergate, we saw them after hours drop 57% over 50% of their entire market cap dropping after hours, which is a pretty huge drop, right? So again, stirring panic in the market. We also have MicroStrategy saying they have a loan from Silvergate, but it's not due until Q125. Now, Bitcoin collateral isn't custodied by Silvergate, so they're not currently holding the collateral that MicroStrategy would have used to get the loans. So what he's saying is, is this doesn't point at MicroStrategy basically having to repay this loan and essentially being margin called, right? So Hopefully this doesn't happen because, of course, if MicroStrategy does get margin called, it's going to be big. But they are still, I think, a long way out of that happening. So this seems to be one of the most clear options as to why the Bitcoin price started to drop. And then, of course, guys, of course, we got the good old liquidations. So Silvergate may very well have been the straw that broke the camel's back. But what were people doing? What were people doing during this time? They were long, massively long, $250 million dollars worth of liquidations in the last 24 hours for long positions. People were getting long 
here, right here. Too many people were getting long. And look, the price did drop from there to there. 6%, which is a significant drop. Now, this is why we do not play with huge amounts of leverage. A 6% drop, if you had, let's say, 2 or 3x leverage, would only be 12% or 18%. Even if you were messing with 10, 10x leverage, which is a huge amount of leverage, that would be a 60% drop. Now, that 60% drop should not be liquidating you. Also, you should be trading with stop losses that stop you out of positions. So if a big drop like this comes that no one is expecting, you don't take the full brunt of it, right guys? Please do be careful out there because there's no reason for you to be getting liquidated in this sort of environment. I really hope that no one who's watching this channel got liquidated in this. Anyway, moving on from that, of course, this is what accelerated the drop because basically what happened was a long squeeze. So we got Silvergate broke, breaking the camel's back and then we got a long squeeze happening. On top of that, we also have news that Mt. Gox has, has kicked off its funds distribution. So someone may very well have been early dumping their Bitcoin from this. Again, another straw for that camel. This may be happening and this may have continual cascading effects. Now, what I'm hoping is a lot of these people who get this Bitcoin hold it because they might be looking at it thinking, I can still 3x from this and it might be an absolutely life-changing amount of money. So hopefully a lot of the Bitcoin is held. Of course, people will be taking profits and this may have an effect on the market. I'm hoping that all of the Bitcoin doesn't get dumped onto the market. Now, talking about Bitcoin being dumped on the market, we did all also see Marathon Digital selling almost all of its Bitcoin mined in February. Now, obviously, now, of course, I don't think that this had an effect on the price, but it may very well be some of these drops that we saw here because they sold 650 Bitcoins out of 683 that they mined in February. Now, most Bitcoin miners are doing exactly the same thing right now. They're selling off their Bitcoin holdings to keep going, right? To keep, to keep the lights on. And this is just something that we have to deal with. A lot of sell pressure is going to be in the market right now when Bitcoin's price is low. When the market starts to move upwards, which I believe it will, I'm not sure when, but when it does, more and more people will be holding it because it's more and more profitable to be holding it. Either way, there's these big catalysts, right? When the market starts to go up, there's fuel for the fire to keep that market going up. And when the market goes down, there's loads of fuel to push that market down, right? So it's going to be a very volatile market that we're going to be in for the next few months, the next few years. So please stay safe out there. Don't get over leveraged. Use opportunities like dollar cost averaging. I actually bought some Bitcoin today because, of course, I think we did get a little bit panicked. We may very well fall down to 15K next, down to 10K. But honestly, I don't care because I believe in Bitcoin for the long term for some of my income, right? Taking a portion of my income, putting it into the market each and every month, and then that's it hopefully in the next few years that will pay off just like it did in the last bear market and that's all i can say i have no idea what's going to happen next but i can bring you guys up to date information as quickly as possible just like i did today so if you like the video i would really appreciate it if you smash that subscribe button and with that said hopefully i will see you guys in the next one a piece from me